So this is the second part of the macro and what we're going to do here is look at these parts where we say is the instructor available? If they're not, display this error message and then set the lesson available flag to be no. And when we set that to no, it means that when we get later on, it will not run the append query and the confirmation message. We'll also be displaying error messages. And what I've done is I've turned this into this flowchart into some pseudocode. So this says if the instructor already has a lesson, so that will take us through the no bit, then instructor error message, that's that bit, set the lesson available variable to no, that's that bit. Finish that if block. Then move on to the next one. If Carl already has a lesson, then do the car error message, set the lesson available to be no, and then finish the if block. And we do the same for learner. So we're going to ignore our flow chart from now on, and we're going to use the pseudo code instead. So we've got here where our local variable is set. So that's the first bit, that bit's been done. And we've also got this last bit that's been done where we say, if the lesson available is yes, then do this process. What we need to do is add each of these three if blocks. And we're going to start by looking at the first one, just for instructor, and we're going to see if the instructor already has a lesson. Okay, so we're going to add here a new if block. So I'm going to have to put it at the end to start with, and then we're going to need to move it up there. Okay, so here's our if block, right, and it's happening before this happens. So I've got my if process, I'm going to put if something, then we want an error message. So let's put the error message in. So put a message box there, and we're going to say the instructor already has a lesson at uh, booked. And we're going to put a title, instructor not available. The other action is, is to set this variable called lesson available to be no instead of yes. So we're going to have a set local vars. It's got to be the same one as above called lesson available. And we're going to make it no. And we'll put no in the speech marks. Now, we only want this to run, we only want this process to go ahead if the instructor already has a lesson. So how do we know if the instructor already has a lesson? Well, if we look here, we've got a date of the lesson of 31st of October, a time slot of 11 o'clock, and the instructor, okay, we're just going to go for Sam Carton because we know that is instructor number one. So what would happen is we'd need to look up in the lesson table and see whether instructor one has a lesson on the 31st of October at 11 o'clock. And we can see here that that instructor doesn't. So that means everything would be okay. So what we're going to ask the process to do is look up in this table and if it finds any records where the instructor ID, the lesson date, and the time slot start match, that means that we have a clash. That instructor is already booked for that date and that time. So it only needs one record with that date and time, and then it's a problem and we have to display the error message. So to do that, we use what is called a DLOOKUP function. Okay, so we're going to do a D lookup, okay? and we're going to look up okay, a particular value in a particular table. And what we'll do is it doesn't matter which field we look up as long as that field has data in it. One field that we know has always got data in it is going to be the primary key. So we're going to look up and see if there is any primary keys in that table where we've got a clash. 
So we're going to look at the lesson ID in the lesson table. And we're going to say that if the D lookup, if when we look that up, we find that it is null, so it is not null, that means it's not empty. If it's not empty, it means it has found one record, any one record. Now at the moment, we haven't put the criteria in to say that the instructor ID must match, the date must match, and the time must match. So at the moment, it's just looking up for uh, a lesson ID in the lesson table. So it's always going to find one, and it will always be not null. So if we were to run this query, it doesn't matter what data we've got in, it will always go through, put this error message in. So if we run it, it says the instructor already has a lesson booked. And notice it doesn't go through that other part because we set this local variable to be no. So that is no longer yes. And so that's not working at the moment because all we have done at the moment is say if when we look that up, that's, em that's not empty. And of course, it isn't empty because it will find a record because we haven't put any criteria in. So what we actually need to do now is start to put some criteria in. Okay, And the first one is going to be to make see whether the instructor matches. Well, the instructor field name is called Lesson Instructor ID. So the first part of our criteria is going to be that the lesson instructor ID matches whatever we've got from the form. So we're going to have forms, okay, book lesson, because that was called the form that we've got, got look, book lesson, and then the, whatever we named that combo box. Well, I named it instructor combo. and we need to finish the speech marks. So what we are saying here is if when we look up the lesson ID in the lesson table, it finds any record where the instructor ID matches what has been selected here, then the instructor's already booked, regardless of the date or time. We're building this up bit by bit. So date or time don't matter at the moment. So if we have a look at our lesson table, we can see these are the instructors that have already got lessons. So if we were to take, for example, instructor number 17, we'll find out who that instructor is. It's Ben Dean. Then we can see that instructor 17 has got two lessons. Now we're ignoring the date and time, remember? So if we go here and we'll go to instructor number 17 with Ben Dean, so there he is, Ben Dean, and the reason alphabetical order, not ID order. Ignore the date and time. Check that booking. Yes, we do want to save a macro. It says the instructor already has a lesson booked. Now, we know he hasn't got one on the 16th of October 2013 at 11 o'clock, but that's okay because we're ignoring the date and time. If we change this to a different instructor, it says the lesson has been booked. We won't actually book it. That's because Fiona hasn't got any lessons. So let's go back and now let's add in the next part of the criteria. So as well as having the instructor ID matching, we also want the date to match. So the date is two words, lesson date. And we want that to be equal to forms again, the book lesson form, and on the book lesson form, we're going to be looking at the lesson date. And I call that lesson date all one word. So this time, if I run the macro, it's now going to say the lesson's been booked because 16th of the 10th, 2013, Ben Dean hasn't got a lesson on that date. So let's have a look at when he has. And he has got a lesson on the... 1st of June 2014. So we'll go back and we'll put in here 1st of June 2014. And now we expect it to come up with the error message. Brilliant. Right, because he's got a lesson on that date. 
regardless of the time. So now we've just got to do the time. So it's a simple case of now adding on a final criteria, which is to say that and the time, and if we just have a look and remind ourselves what it's called, it's called time slot start. So and time slot start in square brackets again is equal to forms then we call it book lesson and then we want to know what that combo was I think I called it time slot combo so I'm going to go for time slot combo we'll save our macro but we will just double check if that's what we called it so we go to the time slot start time combo so we'll just change that now we can't actually get to it at the moment because it's not long enough so what we're going to do is uh, scroll across there we go and we called it start time combo now let's run the macro it says the lesson has been booked. Now that's because on the 1st of June, Ben hasn't got a lesson at 11 o'clock. It's actually at 1600. So if we change this now to 1600, the instructor already has a lesson booked. So that's perfect. So now it is checking if the instructor already has a lesson at that date and that time. If the instructor does have a lesson at that date, at that time then it displays the error message it also sets a variable to be no which means then this bit won't run now what we've done so far is we've set that up for the instructor all we need to do now is change this so that we've got one for car and one for learner and that will be the next tutorial